so this time it's snobbery. We're going to talk about snobbery in the watch world. Does it have a place in the watch world? Let's discuss it. Welcome back to the Timeless Watch channel, guys. So this time, uh, oh yeah, before I do anything, what am I wearing? I'm still wearing my uh, Rolex Sub that I picked up at the AD recently. I did an unboxing on this one. You might want to check it out. It's pretty juicy stuff. Very nice piece, and I'm very lucky to be able to purchase such pieces from my authorized dealer. Um, so this time, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, snobbery. So there's been a lot of discussion lately online and noticed about snobbery and whether it has a place in the luxury watch world. The consensus seems to be that no, you shouldn't be a snob. Snobbery does not have a place in the watch world. And if you come across snobbery in the wristwatch world, you should just walk away from it. Like if your authorized dealer is too snobby or if you, uh, are talking to another guy, a wristwatch guy who's looking down at your collection or whatnot, um, that it uh, should be shunned and uh, disgraced in some way and avoided and, and, and left alone. What are my thoughts on this one? Now, I do want to set two things apart, the wristwatch world and the luxury wristwatch world, okay? If you're buying $200 Seikos, and that's your passion and you like, you know, to purchase $100, $200, $300 watches and you just have a love for the horology in, in them and so on, fine. There is no snobbery in that world as far as I know. If you go into a store selling a Seiko, you, they won't look at what pants you're wearing or, you know, what shoes you're wearing. Uh, or what kind of money you seem to have or don't have. However, there is another side to the wristwatch world, which we call the luxury wrist, wristwatch world. Once you're talking about a watch that costs more than three or four thousand dollars, you're now into the luxury wristwatch world. And uh, I personally think that snobbery actually plays a part in that world, an important part in that world. First of all, the word snobbery is, to me, a kind of an, a misused word or a misunderstood word. For me, in many cases, snobbery is a word that a person who doesn't understand something very well uses when they observe another person who does understand something very well. For example, I quite often get called a wine snob. I love wine. I've been interested in wine and reading about wine and tasting lots of wine, God knows, for years. And as the years go by and I taste better wines and I understand more about them, my um, tolerance for bad wine becomes less, it becomes decreased and decreased all the time. There are certain times where I'll be at a party in someone's house and they'll offer me wine and I'll actually turn it down or maybe accept it just to be nice, but then put it down on the table and not drink it. Why? Because I'm a wine snob. Actually, the reason why is because I understand wine and I appreciate wine a lot. And to me, it deserves a lot of respect. Now, if you don't understand that, if you've never had great wine, if you don't understand what it means to be into the horticulture and the blending and the, the, the whole, the entire viticulture world, then to you, I probably appear to be a wine snob. Uh, and in a way I kind of am and I take it as a compliment because what I am is I am a person who can decipher the difference between swill, awful, crap that will just give you a headache and turn your teeth black and beautiful wine that has taken hundreds of years to develop and perfect and has aged like a beautiful thing. 
it's a bit like appreciating beautiful, beautiful art. Some people wonder, oh my God, how can they spend a million dollars on that painting? It looks like nothing. Well, that person who's speaking about the art in that way is actually just a person who doesn't understand what the art is. It's kind of like that scene in Devil Wears Prada where Anne Hathaway kind of laughs or scoffs at the fact that they think that two belts are completely different when to her eyes they look the same. And then uh, Meryl Streep's character proceeds to explain to her why she doesn't understand what the hell she's talking about and how these experts are have a tuned uh, eye and a tuned perception about the essential differences between these two different belts in this case. It's a bit like that. To me, the word snob, it's a kind of a punch, but it's a punch upward rather than a punch downward. So I have a mixed relationship with the word snob because in some ways, if I'm called a snob at certain things, I take it as a compliment. Now, am I a watch snob? Well, of course I am. In fact, if you are into watches at all and you are watching this channel, you are probably, whether you know it or not, a complete watch snob. In 2019, which is this year, uh, approaching the end of 2019, it is completely ridiculous to spend a lot of money on a wristwatch in many cases. Why? Because a wristwatch is a tool. It's a thing that tells you the time. There, the time is all over the place. You can tell the time on your cell phone. You most likely have a cell phone unless you've been living on Mars for the past while. But why do you do it? Because you have an appreciation for the art in the watch. You have an appreciation for the fine craftsmanship. What you are doing is you're recognizing the beauty of something somewhat sacred and artisan. You're making a difference. You're seeing a difference between that and other things. A lot of people who love wristwatches won't wear an Apple watch, for example, because it's basically, it's just a small phone on your wrist. It's not really a watch. It's not mechanical. A lot of wristwatch guys won't wear a quartz watch. They want a mechanical watch or an automatic watch. They want one of those things, even though the quartz is gonna hold better time and require less attention and so on, they still wanna go for the fine artisan thing. That's snobbery, guys. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with it. Snobbery is in some ways is just another word. It's a dysphemism for appreciation and understanding. That's kind of what it is in many, many cases. Sorry, I had to pause the uh, <clears throat> video there. Somebody just started playing violin right outside the window. <laughs> you know, you're in Italy with just violin starts coming in the window. And there's another thing that happens that gets called snobbery in the watch world. And that is when an authorized dealer doesn't let you in the door because you're not dressed properly or something like that. Or an authorized dealer doesn't really give you as much attention in the store as someone else who maybe has a suit on or something like that. And that's called snobbery. And I've recently heard some people say, if you come across that, just leave the store because there's no room for something like that. Well, okay. Guys, we're not talking about buying a bag of apples here. We're not talking about standing at McDonald's, ordering a cheeseburger. We're talking about the luxury wristwatch world. And the luxury wristwatch world is part of the luxury world in general. First class on the plane, the high rollers area in the casino, the five star hotel instead of the three star hotel, the suite, the president suite inside that five star hotel instead of getting a regular room. It's a world of class levels. Now we could make a long discussion about whether that should exist or not. Some countries don't believe in that kind of stuff. And as we get on and on in time, it becomes less and less. In fact, a lot of airlines don't even have a first class anymore. They have a business class, but no first class. A lot of trains don't have a first class anymore. This whole first class thing is becoming slowly a thing of the past. It's considered a little bit um, distasteful looking down at another class. And in fact, if you've ever been on first class or business class and ever tried to use the bathroom in the coach, 
uh, area, you'll know that feeling when people, when they look at you, go by and they're like, is that asshole really using our bathroom? Because it's like, it's a punch upward. It's like, I hate you because you've got money or you, you know, you're luckier than me or whatever. It's just, a, it's, it's a kind of an innocent resentment, you know, whatever. And honestly, if you're the receiver of that kind of resentment, you shouldn't complain about it because really they're, they're punching upwards, not punching downwards. It's not like racism or something like that. That's a punch downwards. Uh, so <clears throat> here we are in this world of, of class levels and wristwatches, luxury wristwatches, whether you like it or not, are a part of that world very much. If you want a wristwatch just to tell the time, guys, you can buy one for 10 bucks. You can go into a Kmart and buy a watch that'll probably work for a year or two for 10 bucks. And when it breaks, you can just buy another one for 10 bucks. There's absolutely no logical reason other than your passion and your love and your appreciation and a little bit of your snobbery to buy a timepiece that's $50,000 or $20,000 or even $500. So some ADs have a bit of a snobby air about them. Well, you have to understand that they're catering to the luxury world and the snobbery is kind of part of the whole thing. Now, a lot of people right now are crushing their can of Coke in their hand going, I can't believe this guy is saying this, but let me unpack it for a minute. Let, let me give you more analogies, okay? They're the, they're the safest way I have of, of speaking about something. Dance around the, the, the thing slightly. If you ever go into these ADs, they're very beautiful and they have leather seating. And if you're serious about buying a watch or looking at watches, they sit you down. Uh, uh, you know, accommodate yourself, sir. You sit down, there's an extra chair in case you're with your wife or, you know, maybe you're shopping for her or whatever and uh, they sit opposite you at a nice table. It's usually a heavy wooden table and they have the plate there and they have the gloves and the loop. And it's, it's a process and it's a beautiful thing. And for want of a more eloquent phrase, you kind of feel special. You're buying, in many cases, you're buying one of these watches because it, it's beautiful horology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the factors, uh, and let's be honest, especially if you're in the Rolex AP universe, one of the factors is you want to feel a little bit special. You want that special thing. It's the same thing as putting a beautiful necklace on a woman or a beautiful ring or, or whatever. You're making her feel special. If you give a woman a $25,000 diamond <laughs> on a ring, she will feel that she's worth the 25,000. It's a compliment. That's what you're doing. You're saying you are worth this ring. If you're in this AD, the gentleman there is impeccably dressed. He's got a beautiful suit on. The decor inside the, the store is beautiful and impeccable. How would you feel if you went into an AD to buy a beautiful Rolex on your 50th birthday or 40th birthday, or maybe you bring in your son when he graduates and you want to buy him a date just. How would you feel if the AD were like there was sawdust on the floor and you know, a door was hanging open or you know, there was a kind of a weird smell because they all just had cheeseburgers for lunch and stuff like that. How would you feel about that? You might feel like, Guys, pull your act together. Is this a luxury watch store or not? Now they could then turn to you and say, oh, you're just being a snob. You know, the watch is still the watch. So does it work in the other direction? Are you happy with that kind of service? I don't think so, right? So it's, that's all it is. It's entering into a luxury world. And we, a lot of us, I'll go a step further, okay? I'm gonna piss you guys off even more, okay? <laughs> For a lot of people, they want a little snobbery. They want a little bit of the snobbery. When I get on a, a first class flight or a business class flight, I like the fact that I can go in a different line and go through quicker through a security. 
you know, I, I look at 600 people waiting in security in the coach, and I know I paid more, a lot more in some cases, way more for the upfront ticket. And God damn it, I want to stand behind two people and go through pretty quick. Usually I get stopped anyway because sometimes they think I'm a bloody terrorist or something because I've got uh, that dark look and the beard and I always have these bloody shades on. I practically sleep with them on. So, you know, usually it's like, can you stand aside, sir? We need to pat you down, you know, because I look like the kind of guy who, you know, <laughs> who's going to do something like that somehow. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I want the special service. I want them to give me a hot towel so I can wash my hands off once I sit down. This is all the luxury stuff and we enjoy that stuff. And if we weren't given it, we'd be like, well, what am I spending my money on? I want to live like a king for a day or whatever. Well, I want a little bit of the snobbery. Honestly, if I went into an AD that I didn't know and I tested it and I wore sweats uh, with, you know, on a t-shirt with food stains all over it and sandals and I stank a little bit and so on. And I was there picking my nose or something. I would want the AD to kick me out. That would be my test. If the AD could, uh, treated me the same way as he treated the other guy who walked in respectfully and put on a half decent shirt, I'd be a little bit disappointed in the guy. I'd be like, but Jesus Christ, dude, why aren't you going to kick me out? I mean, look at the state of me. I'm here to buy a luxury watch. How about the luxury of some soap at home with soap and water? We'll start there before you go to luxury watch. So it's, there's a little bit of pomp and circumstance in there and there's a little bit of uh, snobbery and it fits. A Rolex world doesn't have cheap things. It's built for the first class flyer for the business class flyer. It's built, it's created for the guy who goes to the high roller section in a casino. I've ever been in a casino. If you go in, there's all the regular tables for all the regular people, the great unwashed, as <laughs> some people say. And then there's the high rollers, it's a small section. It's got a rope. You can't go in unless you're, you've got the money or you're a member of the club or whatever. It's exclusivity. What the hell do you think a Rolex store is? That is exactly the same thing. If you're walking in there and you have disposable income, if you have $10,000, $20,000 to drop on a bloody wristwatch, then that means you, my friend, are a very lucky man or lady. You are outside of the unwashed masses. You are in a position, or at least you want to be, maybe you're pretending to yourself or something, but you're walking into a luxury situation. Behave accordingly. And don't be surprised if they behave accordingly. If you don't like that, if that's not your cup of tea, that, that, okay, fine. Uh, and you still wanna wear a Rolex, okay, fine. But don't get weirded out. Don't get odd because they live in a snobby world. You know, maybe you're, it's, you like a Rolex, but you're not that kind of guy who wears a suit or you don't, you don't care about first class on the plane or whatever, but you do want your Rolex or your other Mar Piguet or whatever. You don't get to call the rest of us snobs just because we like to keep a certain level of class in a world that's all about class. I mean, a Rolex store is all about class. You don't get to judge the rest of us. In a way, you're being the judgmental one, because you're taking us out of context. So let's say I like Leonard Skinner and I like Budweiser and cheap whiskey shots, but I don't want to go to a bar where bikers are. Well, tough shit. You want to you want to listen to Leonard Skinner in the bar and shoot back buds and play some pool. You better be ready that in that same bar, there are gonna be a lot of bikers and guys with tattoos and all. They could be the sweetest guys in the world. I'm not saying they're, you know, I'm not making any judgment on their character, but don't get weird because, oh, I don't like biker. What do you expect? You're into Leonard Skinner, Budweiser, <laughs> you know, cheap whiskey shots and playing pool in the bar. You better get ready for the environment that you're entering. There's nothing odd or wrong about it. Just don't you go judge it. Because if you walk into an uh, Audemars Piguet store or a Patek Philippe store and you're feeling like there's an air of snobbery, you should be happy. You should be like, yes, this is it. This is where 
people buy $60,000 watches. This is where if I win the lottery and I have a hundred grand and I want to buy myself some crazy Patek, I want to sit here. I want to walk in here in a $5,000 suit and be handed a glass of champagne and a nice big leather chair pulled out for me to sit down in when they get ready to show me the pieces. I want all of that snobbery because that's what I'm paying for. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for that class difference. If you don't like any of that stuff and you think everybody on earth should be treated equally, which of course is a sociological conversation, it's a completely separate conversation, but it's slightly related, then fine. But don't, you know, don't get into the luxury wristwatch world. This, these are time pieces that are completely unnecessary. The time is on your goddamn phone. It's, just, it's not really about reading the time. It's about entering into a world of beauty, a world of class. It's the same thing as going on about expensive wine. It's the same thing as going on about beautiful art. Once again, on the wine thing, if I judge someone else, if somebody else is drinking a $5 you know, bottle of wine that I know is gonna give them a headache, and I know it's just, if they knew anything about wine, they would probably spit it out of their mouth. But if I say to them, you know, uh, what the hell are you drinking that for or whatever, then I'm not a snob, I'm just a dick. But if they hand me a glass of that wine, I might go, thank you very much. And then when they walk away, I just quietly put it down on the table. Does that make me a wine snob? You bet your ass it does. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Timeless Watch Channel, guys. I'll see you in the next one.